Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's meeting of the Livingston County Board of Commissioners. We will pause for a moment of prayer, and I would introduce Commissioner Martin Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Heavenly Father, creator of all, of everything, send forth your spirit. May it guide us, may it give us fortitude, may it give us prudence, so that we may be stewards of all you've given us. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Commissioner. And now, if I may prevail upon our uh, director from the health department, Matt Bowling. This is a surprise to you. It is to me, too. Uh, would you uh, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Domus. Here. Commissioner Helzerman. Here. Commissioner Sample. Here. Commissioner Nakagiri. Here. Commissioner Drick. Here. Commissioner Deaton. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Fiani. Here. Commissioner Gross. Here. Quorum is present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve tonight's agenda sample. Support Deaton. There's been a motion made and approved to approve the agenda. Are there any questions or comments, additions, subtractions at all? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Next item on the agenda is the is correspondence. And I don't see any correspondence. Am I missing something? I don't believe we have any. I don't think so. Thank you. No. Moving on. Item seven is the call to the public. Madam Clerk, do we have it in, in the audience? At I do have a few cards. We've got Sharon Lalio from Howell, followed by Wes Nakagiri. Thank you. I think. Mm -hmm. I think the sit down. Sorry. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is Sharon Lolio. I reside at 2650 Fisher Road in Howell. I come to you with concerns and questions regarding the recently passed state house bills 5120 and 5121. These bills basically strip decision-making powers from our local community elected representatives and handed power over to appointed, they're not voted, members of the Michigan Public Service Commission. What decision-making powers were taken away? Those involving massive wind and solar farms. The continued push for renewable energy, which is so far not proven to be very cost-effective for the consumers, continues with steamrolling local control and taking away the ability to voice concerns or ask questions from those whose communities and neighborhoods would be impacted by these so-called farms. Local control over land use appears to be no more. We as constituents and residents have had our voice taken away at another level. Our representation in our local communities has been silenced or restricted. Did any of these legislators in the Michigan House or Senate supporting bills 5120 and 5121 hold meetings with us, their constituents, explaining the rationale of this power grab? Did they explain that not only did they take away power from local authorities, but to protect themselves from any future fallout, they gave decision-making powers to the M M MPSC? Since the answer is fairly obvious, I will direct my questions to you as Livingston County Commissioners. I'm not expecting any answers, but I'm going, going to call this food for thought. Number one, do you as an elected body have clearly defined powers and authority? Number two, 
Have you discussed amongst yourselves any recourse to address what appears to be many of us, your constituents, to be a state power grab? Three, have you discussed looking at other roles, decision-making powers, and authority you assume you have, but state legislators could possibly target for the future? Four, are you attending to send out constituent letters that notify and explain how the passage of House Bills 5120 and 5121 could possibly impact them, their property values, their health, their surrounding communities, and that you have been stripped of the ability to act on or prevent those concerns. I fear losing more of our resident voice and influence, the sacrifice of food producing farmland, paying higher utility bills, and being subjected to the whims and plans of those who don't actually live in our neighborhoods. Those that, don't, that we don't have an easy ability to meet or even hear from. Those that appear that will do anything, including silencing us and the representatives that we have voted in at a local level to achieve their political agenda. I thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Thank you, ma'am. Wes Nakagiri from Heartland Township, followed by Ben Tassich. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention, I had read this um, recently, the um, DTE Energy uh, was granted a uh, $6.45 increase per month uh, for um, clean energy initiatives or something like that. So if you do the math, it's about 80 bucks a year per household. And uh, if you uh, conservatively, I conservatively estimate there's about 80,000 households in, uh, in the County of Livingston. That ends up being uh, $6.4 million taken out of their pocket on the upcoming year. And just to put that into context, that $6.4 million uh, compared to our property tax revenue that we collect, um, of 39.2, it's the equivalent of a 16.3% increase, which is huge, which I'm very thankful for being on this board, which um, I know every one of our, us is, is very fiscally conservative. And uh, I, I think we'll, we need to um, stay the course because other units of government uh, are choosing policies that are taking money out of our constituents wallet. And um, that's all I had, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Ben Tassich, Genoa Township, followed by David Van Auker. Good evening. Good evening. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, ben Tassich, Genoa Township. Um, I'm here on behalf of um, Livingston County Transportation Coalition, and you're probably tired of seeing me so uh, every, every meeting. Uh, I'm here to um, invite you uh, for a personal invitation. The coalition would like to invite you to our third annual Rosa Parks Transit Equity Day to uh, be celebrated on February 2nd of this coming year at uh, Cleary University. And uh, the purpose of this celebration is to thank and recognize our transportation department employees who worked so hard and so diligently to transport us throughout the year. Over 150,000 people in our county are being transported on an annual basis. And uh, that day is uh, not only being recognized in our county, but it's also nationally recognized too. It's a, uh, not a holiday, but it's a national recognition day. Um, <clears throat> we, we, we cannot thank the transportation department enough because without the ability to get to your job, and you've heard this a thousand times, transportation is at the intersectionality, in my opinion, of everything we do in life. And without transportation, you are in trouble. Uh, it's also good economically too, if I may add that. Um, the other thing is um, it really hearkens my, my, my soul to learn that this board has approved the transportation department to hire four new bus drivers and a dispatcher. And with that decision, 
they will be able now to expand the weekend transportation. On Sundays, there's only one bus running on Sunday. And for a, a county of 200,000 people, we all can agree one bus is not enough to help us get around to church or, or, or whatever things we have to do on a Sunday or, or, or even Saturday for, for that matter of fact. So uh, it is so good to, to, to understand and hear that this board has approved uh, the hiring of, of uh, and expanding uh, public transportation in our county. And we're ever so thankful for that. Um, I, I, I would like to ask one more thing, if I may. Do I have time? Uh, Got 30 minutes, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> can I take the first option? <laughs> we'll have to take a vote. <laughs> this is just, we're asking if, if this uh, board would, would uh, pass a resolution this year to recognize Transportation Equity Day and the importance of that day and how it serves, serves our community. Just a resolution. We're not asking for any money. We're not asking for anything at all. And I would also like to thank the uh, commissioners that attended our last uh, uh, second annual uh, Rosa Parks Transit Equity Day that was held at Torch 80. And uh, I, I'm hopeful that you all can come and visit us on that day. Breakfast at eight o'clock. Breakfast is free. And, uh, and the activities, uh, the program starts at nine o'clock. Thank you for your time. Uh, Happy New Year. Thank you very much, Ben. David Van Auker from Osceola, followed by Carrie McGowan. What was a challenge to fit everything in in three minutes, gentlemen? All right. So since our last meeting, I gave some statistics. I'll give a few more. Since our last meeting, the individual in the country each owes and $885,000 per person. That's a change of $293 per individual. Uh, for taxpayers, it's gone from $259,417 to $259,949, a change of $532. So we definitely have some issues with uh, government spending. Um, trying to keep this a little bit short. I got a lot of different points, but a uh, combination of setting opinions here on, on how I feel about certain things, but also too, to make sure that we're, we're educating people on what's going on in our country when we're taking money from a federal government that's essentially broke. Um, higher interest rates, it's, it's based on printing of money in, in large part. So when your stuff costs more at the store, it's a hidden tax that people are paying. This is more for the audience than well, maybe for you, but I don't know. Uh, we're talking about, uh, there's a false assumption that I've always run into. Nobody really says it, but it really kind of comes out in their thinking. And that is essentially when you've got two parties positions, there's almost the assumption that you have an infinite supply of money and one party wants to hand it out and the other party says, no, we wanna keep it to ourselves. It doesn't work that way. What we're, we're concerned about is educating people and this is a concern that has less to do with you, but I think part of this problem stems from the way that our schools are not teaching economics properly. They don't teach what causes money to have value or not have value. They don't explain what a government deficit is or isn't and how it impacts an economy, but that's for the school board. So basically what I am concerned about is that the dollar is in trouble and that the U.S. government is borrowing over a quarter of its annual spending at this point. It's even financing the borrowing of its own spending. It, it pays for its own sale of its bonds because people aren't buying the bonds like they used to because there's a, there's a loss of confidence in the dollar. Why do I say this here? I'm saying it in summary quickly is that we want to be cautious about how much we depend on federal monies in, as we go forward because we cannot be confident about how we're able to rely on that money. So we want to be making sure that we're focusing on maintaining the things that we have and if we can expand, wonderful. But if we can't, we always need to keep this in mind in our thinking. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Carrie McGowan from Rochester Hills, followed by Carrie. Good evening, Carrie. You have three minutes. Thank you. 
So my name is Carrie McGowan. I'm an animal advocate. I've worked in many different communities across the state. I've worked in Lansing. I've participated on MDARD's Animal Advisory Committee. Um, I'm, I'm here today because there's a concern about a group in Livingston County that right now resides on a 20 acre vacant parcel with over a hundred farm animals. There's no running water. There's no electricity. There's tarps for shelter. And this group also intends to purchase a property in Ty or Osceola Township that has eight and a half acres. There's over 30 of their horses there at the moment. Their intent is to take those 100 plus farm animals to Osceola Township. They also have about 40 feral dogs in Genesee County that they would like to bring to that property also. The Devoted Barn has a long history of going from township to township and not paying any attention to ordinances and litigating afterwards. They started in Frenchtown Township down in the Monroe County area. They were forced out of there. They went to Rose Township in Oakland County. There were years of litigation. They were forced out of there, went to Springfield Township, were forced out of there. That's where they are now. So because this is a animal rescue, there's issues with animals and their care and their husbandry. And I'm sure that your animal control is also ready aware of this, but I just want everybody here to know that this is happening. And um, I hope you take it seriously and you encourage the communities to take it seriously and you can encourage your animal control to do what they can do to make sure that it is taken care of. And that's really kind of all I wanted to tell you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Happy Would you be so kind as to give the clerk a copy of that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Carrie, is it Suave? Sove. Sove from Osceola Township. I actually was just coming here tonight to learn. I wasn't planning on speaking, but I'm here because I do live next to the 4441 Mac Road residence that the horses are at. Um, I just purchased our house that uh, next to that property and the neighbor, the devoted barn has their 30 plus horses there. They've been there less than six months. Property is destroyed. Um, it's a pretty big nuisance, smell, flies and such. And uh, I went to the township meeting, I plan on going tomorrow. <laughs> My only concern is the ordinances. And apparently there is no ordinance in Osceola for the limit on horses. It's the only township that has no limit. So now we're facing a situation where the property is already destroyed and they are currently being sued by Tyrone Township for these hundred plus animals in Livingston County. So my concern is uh, the care for these horses, the blight, the nuisance, and the possibility of a hundred more animals coming to the adjoining 14 acres directly across from my deck. So, like I said, I'm just here to learn and listen, and hopefully something will come of it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did you have some material? That I you... don't. I'm okay. totally unprepared. Right. You sounded very good to us, so. Thanks. I have no further cards from the chambers. Okay. Uh, we have, have any... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do we I have Cindy any... McNevich on the... On for Zoom. Okay. 
Good yeah. evening, commissioners. Good um, evening. Last At the last board meeting, in response to someone at the call of the public talking about expanding <clears throat> transportation, it was noted that Livingston County had the lowest, po lowest population living at or below the poverty level of any county in Michigan, and that would be 5%. 5% means 10,000 persons in Livingston County live at or below the federal poverty level. 10,000 is more, more people than li that live in the city of Brighton, which is at 7,500, and equal to the population of that that lives in the city of Howell. <clears throat> that does not include ALICE. ALICE is an acronym for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. This is a new way of defining and understanding the struggles of households that earn above the poverty level, <clears throat> but not enough to afford bare bones household budget, the basic necessities of life, such as housing, food, health care, and transportation. Far too many families, <clears throat> the cost of living outpaces what they earn. For Livingston, the Alice household income is 59000 a year. That means an hourly wage of $29 <clears throat> is living in Alice. That level of income includes many county employees, service and retail jobs. The number of Alice households in Livingston County is 25%, according to the HSCB board. 25% of the total population in the county is 50,000 people. So the total population of residents living in poverty in Alice is around 60,000 people. That's all in our county. Above and beyond that, there are those that work here and can't afford to buy or even rent a place in Livingston. Now that's something to think about. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I do not have any more, Commissioner. There's no one else on Zoom? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Did we miss anybody from the audience? Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, November 27th of this year. Chair will entertain a motion. I move to approve the meeting minutes dated November 27th, 2023 and the closed meeting minutes dated November 27th, 2023. Support gross. It's been moved and supported to approve these minutes. Are there any questions, additions, or changes? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? There are none. Yeah. Item nine is uh, includes the tabled items from previous meetings, and there are none. Next item on the agenda is reports. We're pleased to have a, with us this evening, Mr. Steve Curry, who is the executive director of the Michigan Association of Counties and welcome to Livingston County, sir. Glad to have you. Thank you, Chairman and, and commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. I do have a presentation I'm gonna run through. Uh, the good news is it only takes me about 45 minutes, so you guys should be able to get on. No, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be quick. There's a lot of information here, and feel comfortable to interrupt me at any time if you want to ask me a question or wait till the end. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, so first up, it's our 125th anniversary. Uh, Mac's been around a long time. We're one of the oldest, if not the oldest, local government uh, association in the in the. Uh, we're not quite in the country. I think we're number two in the country, but in the state representing locals, we're the oldest. Uh, if you had the opportunity to come to our office, you can actually see the first handwritten minutes from the first meeting in 1898. Uh, when we were moving offices about six years ago, we found them well preserved in the closet. And so you, we have a whole book of the original meeting minutes. So that's kind of nice to see the history there. You can kind of see the service expansions there over the years. Um, so the association's doing great. We're finishing up 125th anniversary. And as a gift to all the counties, we're gonna be sending around a kind of a poster, a frame poster that's got every county seal on it. And it just uh, has, a, it highlights 125 years and hopefully you'll be able to find a place for that in this building. So look for that in the next month. Next slide, please. So what is Mac's purpose? We're primarily known for advocacy, both at the state and federal level. Uh, we advocate with NACO at the federal level on federal issues. And then of course in the state, we're the county commissioner's voice in Lansing. 
Uh, education, we provide various educational opportunities. Last week on Thursday, we actually had one of our one-day summits. In Lansing, we had over 100 attendees for that. We also uh, do two conferences a year. Our spring conference is our legislative conference. That's always in Lansing. That'll be uh, end of April next year. And then we do an annual conference, which kind of rotates around the state. And that'll be in October of next year. Uh, next year, it'll be in Traverse City. So hopefully you folks can attend that. We also, in cooperation with MSU Extension, do a new county commissioner school. Uh, after each election. So of course, 2024, there'll be a new county commissioner school uh, for those four year terms that county commissioners will be running for. Uh, services, we provide various services. You can kind of see them listed there. You're very active in our purchasing program, which is CoPro Plus. Uh, also, Commissioner Smith sits on the Board of Trustees for the Workers' Compensation Fund, which uh, I think you were one of the original uh, members of that fund. And that's a very strong fund that's been around for a long time. Next slide, please. This is your current MAC leadership. Jim Story is the MAC president from Allegan County, uh, first vice president, Melissa Dobb from Wayne County, and second vice president, uh, Antoinette Wallace from Macomb County. Next slide, please. This is about MAC's leadership. We have 16 members uh, elected from the, each region across the state, uh, two seats from each region. We meet at least four times a year at our conferences and then two times outside our conferences and maybe another time after that. And our board elections are typically held at our annual conference. Next slide. Uh, the board is supported by uh, our committees, our internal committees. These committees create our platforms, which is essentially our legislative marching orders for our legislative staff each year. Uh, we have oftentimes had participation from Livingston County on those committees. If you would like to participate, you can go to micounties.org. There's an application and we can get you appointed to any one of those committees. You don't need to participate in person. We've had remote options available for a long, long time. Uh, Sheriff Murphy actually participates in our Judiciary Public Safety Committee a committee is kind of a, a voice of sheriffs on there. They don't get a vote, but they do provide some, some you know, real, real time uh, information for that committee to make decisions. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So these are some of the legislative priorities we're gonna be working on uh, this as we finish up this legislative session next year. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about more in more detail about some of these. Uh, so you can go ahead and go to the next slide. First, I wanna to touch on the budget uh, that was uh, completed the beginning of the year. Uh, the big highlight, of course, that we're always working on is county revenue sharing dollars. We've got a 5% uh, ongoing increase every year with two time, one per, or two time for public safety, uh, an increase in the child care fund up to 75%. We'll talk about some legislation that deals with that. And then you can kind of see some of the other highlights from the budget. Of course, as we're finishing up the year, we do this all over again in the spring. The state will introduce its budget. Uh, the governor will introduce her budget in January. And We'll start working with the legislature uh, up until kind of that July 1st deadline that they have uh, on the budget items, which will include many of these uh, items as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just briefly on the legislative calendar, I'm sure you are well aware that they did adjourn in November. Uh, they are expected to come back in January. Of course, the House will not be fully uh, have full participation until uh, probably May for that special election when that special election is finalized. So you have uh, both caucuses have 54 members in the House. Nothing has changed in the Senate. House committees have stayed the same. Leadership in the House has stayed the same. But they are expected to come back and start working in committees and, in, um, and get done what they can in the spring. Of course, the budget is most important at that point in time. So we'll see how things go uh, with that uh, tied uh, legislature or tied House. Next slide, please. So here are some of the legislative issues that we've been working on and will continue to work on. Revenue sharing trust fund, basically this would create a virtual lockbox for revenue sharing dollars. Each year, uh, the, the state revenue sharing, which is statutory for counties, uh, constitutional for cities, villages, and townships, uh, the statutory component of that revenue sharing can be appropriated away each spring by the legislature. So they could say, you know what, we wanna take 50% of those dollars and do something else with it, which we've seen in the past, not that to that drastic of a level, but we have seen 20% cuts. Now in the past seven years, we've seen increases in those dollars, but by no means does that keep up with inflation, especially the way it is right now. So what we're pr proposing is taking 8% of the 4% of the sales tax, putting that in a separate fund that would, that would uh, those dollars would go in there each spring, and then they would be dispersed based on the percentage as it is now. There's also a growth number in there of about 3% to, to account for inflationary dollars. As you can see, we were success, successful in getting that out of the House 106 to 4, uh, which getting things done in a bipartisan banner <laughs> in these times are, are challenging enough. So we were pretty excited about that. Now we uh, wait action in that 
Senate on that, and it's in the uh, Senate uh, Finance Committee right now. Next slide, please. Another piece of legislation that moved its way uh, through the House is a public safety trust fund. This was presented uh, originally pushed by uh, Mayor Duggan in Detroit to kind of account for some of the higher crime areas in the state. Uh, when it was introduced, there was uh, kind of left out the the fact that our county sheriffs do need increased funding as well. So we're advocating for that component so it doesn't just go to, to cities and villages and townships right now. If a CVT does not have a, a police department, those funds would go to the county, but we're working to get that loosened up a little more where counties would be eligible for those funds as well. So that is in the Senate as well. Next slide, please. Veterans, veterans property tax exemption. This is something we've been talking about for a while. We are by no means trying to take this away. Uh, what we're trying to do is get it, re, get the state to reimburse us for those lost dollars, which when, when these, this first enacted in 2013, it was about $25 million to hit to locals. Now it's climbed to about $75 million statewide. Uh, so the first policy changes up there are more technical changes that kind of help the veterans out to kind of get the funds a little easier, maybe not have to re-register every year. And then the bottom reimbursement dollars, those are the ones that would reimburse counties. It would have no effect on the veteran. They would still see the exemption as they see now, but the state would be reimbursing local for, locals for those dollars. We've taken a run at this probably the past six years, uh, got it almost across the finish line last session. So we're looking forward to getting this done, uh, hopefully by the next, uh, by the end of next year's session. Next slide, please. Uh, PPT reimbursement. Again, another exemption the state voted on uh, back in 2021 through an economic development package. It raised that small business exemption from $80,000 to $180,000. Statewide, that cost locals about $75 million uh, to their budget. Uh, at the time, we were promised that that would be fixed. Well, it finally got fixed a few years later. Uh, and now that is Public Act 174 through 176. So that's $75 million going back to locals out of the state budget each year. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Juvenile justice reform, so you can kind of see uh, everything that's uh, dealing with the juvenile justice changes. The big thing is the reimbursement of the child care fund from 50% to 75%. That's something we've worked on for a long, long time, and finally we're able to get that enacted. So that's, that's some significant dollars coming back to counties to help with that child care fund reimbursement reimbursement. You can kind of see some of the uh, other changes, um, and we are still waiting for the governor's sig signature on that, but she is expected to sign that. Next slide, please. Clean energy legislation. Uh, so this, th these are the enacted bills that actually set the renewable energy goals by 2032, uh, and then 100% by 2040. Um, you can kind of see the PAs for that in the next slide, please. And then this, of course, gets at those solar and wind siting bills uh, that we opposed all versions of. Uh, worked very hard to try to get those. Um, Get, get those not passed. Unfortunately, we were not successful. We worked very hard with the Township Association on that. Uh, we were working on kind of a, a one page document that we are going to send out to county commissioners that kind of talks through the different options now that are up, out there. Uh, I did read the other day that there is a ballot initiative or, or a referendum that, that could be introduced uh, or is being worked on. Very little information on that, but we'll obviously communicate that as we know more information. Uh, but be on the lookout for that document. We're finalizing that now. That kind of lays out the different options for counties at this point. Next slide, please. I have a question. Do you have any special um, advice for us uh, at that? Because that is a concern. Yeah, so when you get that document, you'll see what you can do. You can do nothing. You can pass something that allows for the state you, that, that is similar to the state restrictions. You can pass something that is similar to the state restrictions plus your own restrictions in different areas, or you can just pass whatever you want and see what happens. So you kind of see what the different options are, what the pros and cons are. Uh, by, by no means are, you know, it's not legal advice by any means. It's just kind of uh, what our opinion is of where things are at right now. So isn't most of this on the township level as opposed to the county level? It's a good question. So it depends. So right now we have 20 counties that do do countywide zoning. So there were there were that 20 and they actually have uh, renewable energy plans. They had them. Um, so there is a lot of county zoning going on, but in most instances it is townships, but we do have a lot of counties that do do partial zoning or full countywide zoning. And that's where the, the, the information would be. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, statewide septic code, again, another uh, initiative coming through the legislature that would go for a one size fits all kind of concept on uh, septic systems across the state. Uh, we had a big presentation on this last week um, where we had various groups talk about it. We had health departments there. Obviously, the existing legislation is a no-go for us. It's just not sustainable. Uh, there's no way these, these systems can be uh, inspected every five years, but the demands on the local public health, we don't even know where half these are. I think the first step in this process is really, if we're going to start putting money at this and, and, and looking at these systems, is let's first determine where they are, and then let's do this as a risk-based process. Let's not just go carte blanche and say every five years we got to inspect these. That doesn't make a lot of sense. That's costly for counties. It's costly for homeowners. It just it just doesn't make sense. So they're work grouping this now. And I think uh, a lot of people understand the concerns about it. Uh, that's why you didn't see a lot of movement on this uh, the beginning of this year when it was introduced. So we'll see how that plays out over the next year. I know they've been doing a lot of work groups on it, uh, but still no consensus on what the direction will be. Uh, next slide, please. Binding arbitration. This is just an, an update on that. So that, that did pass the House. That's something that's been brought up probably the past 10 years, um, which does expand binding arbitration to those 312 groups. Uh, so that's just an update on that. You can see that PA there. Next slide, please. So this is your MAC advocacy team. Dina Bosworth, our Director of Government Affairs. She primarily handles uh, tax issues, some environmental issues. Madeline Feta handles our transportation and some environmental issues. Uh, Samantha Gibson handles judiciary and, and health and human services issues. And then Amanda is the, their assistant and kind of clerks all of our committees. So if you ever have a question you don't know who to ask, you can start with Amanda and she'll get you uh, pointed in the right direction. Next slide, please. We do have a MAC pack. Uh, we use that to support primarily the 24 former county commissioners that are in the legislature now. Uh, so if you are able to donate, we appreciate that. Next slide, please. I uh, talked a little bit about our conferences. Those are the exact dates of our conferences. They're also on our website as well. So if you're able to attend, we'd love to see you there. Next slide, please. And then our Mac communication tools. So we, we obviously have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We do a podcast every week now. That's about 20 minutes. Hopefully you're getting our weekly legislative updates. There's a lot of good information there. We've gone back to a printed newsletter that comes out every other month and highlights a variety of things. So we try to keep you informed as much as possible, as quickly as possible, to hopefully uh, not to the point where it's nauseating to you to see an email from Mac, but hopefully you're getting a lot of information. So that's, our, that's my presentation. Be happy to answer any questions. Stunned us. <laughs> My goal is to throw a lot at you, so your just heads are spinning. And then, <laughs> no, but feel free to follow up afterwards as you uh, think about things. If there's something you do have concerns about or questions about, please reach out to myself or our staff, and we'd be happy to get back to you. We usually get back to you in the next 24 hours. So. And what is the meeting schedule in Lansing uh, for Mac? Could we attend as a so anyone can can attend our committee meetings? Just let Amanda know, and she can send you the okay. link. Um, if you want to be appointed to a committee to actually vote, um, you, set, you fill out an application, you get appointed. There is some stipulations there where you can't miss more than three meetings. Otherwise, we do have to mm -hmm. remove you from the committee because of quorum issues. But uh, what the cadence on that typically is, is they'll start meeting again in the beginning of the year. So they'll meet until June, work on our platforms. Then those platforms go to the board for a vote. And then those platforms, once approved by the board, go to the general membership at the annual conference. And then they're voted on there. And then they'll meet, they usually, the committees usually break a little bit in the summer for like July, August, maybe September, and then come back to the end of the year. Thank you very much, Steve. Anybody no have any questions? Are you sure? You know, we may never see him again for a couple of weeks. I so. try to visit every county once every um, year. Say a couple so. of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I do try to visit about half the counties well, every year. I know so. you're busy. I, I spent uh, time at a public safety committee up there for several years and uh, you guys do a terrific job. That was in the old building. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now we're downtown. So you're, you're downtown, I'll say. Well, this is, thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you. Appreciate and, the uh, time tonight. Don't Thanks. be a stranger, and we'll, we'll come visit you as well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. We also have a presentation from Mary Robinson the executive director of the Livingston County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Yes. Good evening. Good, Good evening. To see you. Hello, everybody. Hello. 
Um, thank you for having me today. And um, thank you very much for the wonderful job that you are doing here in this county. You are truly appreciated. And I know it's late and you have a lot to um, go over. So I will be brief. I don't, have a, I don't have a PowerPoint this time or any slides. So I just wanna talk. Um, again, my name is Mary Robinson. I'm the executive director for Livingston County Convention Visitors Bureau, also known as Explore Brighton Howell Area. That's our DBA, our doing business as name. Um, for those who aren't familiar, which I think most of you are, we've been around since 1991, and I've been the director since 2017, and I've been giving little presentations here since then. I think maybe I missed one during COVID, but for the most part, I just try to uh, give you a quick update as to what we are doing doing. Um, and we have some exciting news for this year. Uh, our Visitors Bureau launched our um, Certified Tourism Ambassador Program fully. And you may have heard about that because there's a lot of buzz going on about the CTAs. And I would like to say we have one Roger Deaton CTA um, on the commission. We're very proud of that In fact. We appreciate that. Um, to become a Certified Tourism Ambassador in Livingston County is very easy. Uh, we've made it very easy. We worked with a national company program to bring this um, education to you. It's a one-time four-hour class, and the curriculum taught in this class is the power of tourism in our area, discovering the Brighton Hall area, so you learn all about what there is to do, see, and explore in Livingston County. Um, knowing, finding, and using resources and ex exceeding customer service expectations. And the reason why I brought this program to Livingston County is because our visitor bureau does a lot of marketing. We're very outward facing. You know, you see us in other communities marketing to bring visitors, meetings, and events to this area. And we can market all day, but if we got to take care of the people when they do come here. So um, I don't know if you want to say anything about the program, but. Um, maybe everybody should be a CTA, right? True. Um, I do have information about the program. We, we have 201 CTAs now in Livingston County and we wanna get that number up to thousands. So I would really encourage you to encourage the groups that you work with and yourself to become a CTA. I will give this information out. And it's for everybody from you don't have to be in the hospitality industry to be a CTA because we're all proud of our community and we want people to know about it and we want to be welcoming. So uh, we have the city of Brighton Police Department, city of Howell Police Department is, uh, we have CTAs. Our chief of police is a CTA. Um, we have restaurant owners, hotel managers, and everyday people. If you work, live, or volunteer in Livingston County, we want you to be a CTA. So more about that um, on our website, explorebrightonhowellarea.com. Lots more information there. Um, our annual visitor's guide, which I um, produce with uh, in tandem with some partners, we produce usually 10,000 a year. Well, this year we produce 20,000 and we're about ready to run out again. So there's high demand for this Visitor Bureau publication, <clears throat> which has one of the only maps, by the way, in Livingston County. Um, but we, pr we put these in all of our chambers of commerce. We put them in different uh, schools, take them. Um, our, different co our county building takes it. Also lots of township buildings, municipalities take it. Anywhere that we think a visitor may come, we wanna put it. So um, this is printed out, like I said, 20,000 copies this year. It goes to meeting and event planners to encourage them to bring their meeting and event here. And we also um, put them in our visitor bureau. Our office, if you haven't visited us recently, is still located in the Howell Chamber of Commerce. And uh, we have expanded our staff this year. So we now have a um, meetings and events person who is bringing in meetings and events to Livingston County. So as you probably know, sports tourism is really popular at the Legacy Center Sports Complex and the different games and tournaments played around the county. But we also have um, great, wonderful banquet spaces and event spaces to host events that people are finding out about. Uh, we're sort of that meet in the middle destination between Lansing and Detroit 
Dayton, Ann Arbor, and people are really seeking us out to, to visit meet in events here. So I have our visitor guide copy here. Um, since we're limited quantities, I will give you some. And we are about ready to do another reprint on February 1st because we have an upcoming annual partner meeting on February 14th. Yes, that's Valentine's Day. So we would love for you to attend that, save the date. It's at Block Brewing at 1130. We'll get you an invitation. But that's where I also go over the numbers and statistics um, for the countywide tourism, as well as statewide tourism. So you'll learn a lot. You'll have a great lunch at Block. We hope you can make that. Give you some of these. <clears throat> You can tell me to slow down. I know I talk fast. Um, but we're the, we're the Visitors Bureau that is um, welcoming people to our area to visit our shopping, our dining, our parks. So we always encourage people to go local and to keep the business here in Livingston County. We're always telling people, <clears throat> if you have a meeting, event, or conference outside of the county that you would like to bring to the county to contact us so we can try to make that happen. All of that... Um, helps our economy, obviously, job growth, and also helps spur those, um, you know, sales that we need throughout the county with retail, shopping, dining, everything. So we encourage that. Um, we also received an uh, increase in our budget assessment this year um, from two to 5% so that we are able to expand our staff again and our resources and reach. So you should see even more marketing efforts, but I'm going to tell you more about that on February 14th at our annual partner meeting, which I will have all of you attend, um, and, and meet our staff at that meeting as well. Um, to learn about all the efforts that we have going on in the area. We tell people to come here because it's a wonderful place. And our marketing and research indicates that visitors think that we are safe, welcoming, and a fun place to visit. So we continue to put out stories, blogs, we're on all the social media channels. And we're telling people to visit here. Uh, because when it starts with a visit, they may be an entrepreneur, they may be looking for a home, they may be wanting to start, um, go, to, go to college. So it starts with a visit, and that's what we believe, and we encourage people to come and uh, explore, explore the Brighton Howell area. So that's pretty much all I have to report is to encourage you to come to that meeting. And if you have any questions or you need anything at all, please let me know. Thank you very much. And thank you for recognizing uh, uh, yes. uh, our, our man here, uh, Roger Deaton. He's a one-man ambassador for just about everybody in the county. So. I actually, that's absolutely true. He's always everywhere. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for all you do and have a great evening. Good evening. Thanks. We're going to go on to the next item, which is... Uh, our public hearing. We're having a public hearing this evening uh, relative to the adoption of the 2024 Livingston County operating budget. We will now call this public hearing to order and a motion to do so will be required. So the chair will entertain that motion. So moved. And supported. Support Deaton. Any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. The public hearing is now open. Open for public comments. Anyone that wishes to comment on the, on the budget? And I might remind you, if you haven't seen it, the budget is on current display at the, uh, for viewing at the uh, clerk's office and on our homepage of the Livingston County website. So is there anybody in the audience that cares to voice their opinion or feelings or? I do not have anybody. I mean, we brought all of these people here this evening and they're speechless. We've worn them out already. Motion to uh, Zoom. No. Is there one, anyone on Zoom that uh, wishes to comment on the budget? No, sir, I don't see any. Motion to adjourn the public hearing. Support Alzheimer's. Been moved and supported to adjourn the public hearing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? 
we will now have the final adoption of the 2024 operating budget for fiscal year 2024, effective January 1st, 2024. Chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Support Smith. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All no. those opposed? Is a roll call? I'm sorry. This one does require a roll call vote. You want to take that? Yes, thank you. Uh, this is resolution 2023-12-194. It's on the agenda as 12 sub A. It's brought to us by the Board of Commissioners. It's a resolution adopting the 2024 Livingston County operating budget. May get a motion to discuss. So move so, gross. Second sample. Thank you. Any discussion, comment, or I, question? I did already have a motion by Commissioner Fiani, seconded by Commissioner Smith on that particular resolution. As long as the minutes reflect it was to that resolution, I can yeah, deal. It is to the, I have it to resolution 194. Thank you. <clears throat> any uh, comment, any amendment, any uh, objection by commissioners? I would like to bring to the commissioner's attention a potential amendment that in some of the paragraphs, the three entities are designated as judges, county elected officials, department heads, but in some paragraphs, there are only two of those. I put this as a uh, informational email and I'd like Cindy or Hillary to determine or give us an idea whether that was intentional that some should be three and some should be two, or whether they should all be consistent as three. Page 12, first paragraph. Also the fifth paragraph, same page, and the sixth paragraph, same page. page that's not the budget. Resolution. I do believe that this is in reference to um, Judge Hattie had come in last year when we were adopting the 2023 budget and had taken exception to some of our language in the paragraph. So we did adjust them at that time. So it was last year's adjustment. I believe so. I believe that our office was involved in that review and indicated the changes were consistent with the Excuse me, Mr. Norfer, we cannot hear you on Zoom. I'm hearing that our attorney says that the law says some paragraphs have to be two entities, other paragraphs have to be three entities as written. That's correct. I'm hearing it. Thank you for clearing that up. Thank you, Hillary. The next item that I would propose as a bit of a discussion would be on page 12, the last paragraph. Uh, currently, the word talks about a quarterly no, I take that back. On page three, second paragraph, there's a quarterly report that uh, would be required. And I would like consideration that we change that to monthly so that we know faster when funds are being spent outside the budget. Discussion? Good idea, bad idea? What, what, what page, paragraph? Page three. Second paragraph. Um, for that particular resolution, there is no page three. Budget, budget paragraph, budget resolution. Chart. Well, that's a chart, isn't it? Okay. What page is that on the agenda? Uh -huh. 
I get it. Look at uh, first off at page 12. At the very bottom, the last be it further resolved. That's where I'm suggesting that there be a monthly report. That's agenda page 12 of 33. Agenda page 12, yes. I guess I'm missing where it says, currently says quarterly. The quarterly is on the next page, page 13. I said page three. The second be resolved on page 13. It says quarterly uh, report or notification. And those are for uh, adjustments under $50,000. Yes. It's so each one of them, the one on page 12 and the one on page 13, we get reports faster than uh, what might be indicated. What was your, when you say report, what was your vision of a, of a report? To, to make a report at a commissioner meeting, to do something in writing and submit it? Uh, no, I don't, I don't consider a report at a commissioner meeting. I would think an email would be fine. Well. And we just have a heads up a little bit faster than uh, never or quarterly. Can I suggest we get the commentary of our Yes, CFO? please, go ahead. Hi, thank you for that clarification, <laughs> Commissioner Drick. Um, so currently the way it's done is you're notified of that, those transfers in the quarterly budget amendment. So in the quarterly budget amendment, it shows any sort of transfer that is done from contingency. So we could do an email if that is what the request is, but uh, the quarterly amount is in line with our quarterly budget amendment. Correct. And then, and we get an email because of that? You don't, but you could. Would we have to put it in the budget or would it be just fine to have a sense of the commission that we'd like emails for these things? You would like a monthly, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, you would like a monthly email with any transfer that the um, county administrator does that's under $50,000. Is that correct? Perfect. Okay. That's my sense. Is that okay with the rest of the commission as just a, a sense of the commission? <coughs> Commissioner Gross? Curiosity on, the, on the weekly report, uh, Cindy, isn't a lot of that in there as, as well? Um, no, I don't typically okay. put that in there. I'm not sure if that was something that Nathan previously did, um, but we typically will just talk about it during the budget amendment. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Gross. Um, if within a monthly period, there are no transfers. Will we see a email that so states? or would, it, would we just skip it? Oh, I can send out an email that says there were no transfers this month, just to make it clear. Okay. Commissioner Sample. What are, what's the, what are you suggesting the threshold of notification is? If, if it falls under paragraph, uh, if it falls under the resolution paragraph at the last one on page 12, or the second one on page 13, they're usually, uh, transfers less than 50,000. I mean, currently my assumption, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my assumption is that you are specifically speaking of transfers, um, like for instance, in the general fund, a transfer from contingency into a department, if that is so requested. Um, or are you suggesting any type of transfer that is done? Because there are quite a few of those net zero transfers that we do. That's um, no, we're talking about the ones that are are uh, have a lot of money to do with them, not the net zeros. Okay, so the, uh, there's transfers from contingency. We do not, uh, the county administrator is not authorized to do any transfers that changes the bottom line of the fund. So those have to come before the board as part of the quarterly budget amendment or as a separate resolution. Um, the only thing that he would be able, or he or she would be able to do is do a transfer that has a uh, no net, uh, net effect on the bottom line. That's fine. That, okay. that, that's a good uh, uh, guidelines, guide rails. Okay, that can just be a change in the process. I don't know that you need to change this in the I resolution. Agree with that. Okay. 
Thank you for the discussion, yeah. commissioners. Anyone else seek a discussion of any item? Just one, Commissioner Domus. Well, <clears throat> we, well, we talked about this earlier today. I just want to make sure that the, the budget reflects that two hundred thousand dollar reduction in the budget to the prosecutor's office. I'm not the prosecutor, but the, the courts. Yes. Yeah, so the uh, level five adopted budget to be adopted does include a two hundred thousand dollar reduction to the courts budget. Um, it also includes a um, assistant prosecuting attorney, two, I'm sorry, one, oh, one uh, yeah. right, from August through December. Mm -hmm. How about the uh, six drivers for that? It includes the six drivers. There was no change on that. There was just some change in language um, mm -hmm. as making sure that the drivers would not be hired until the uh, contract was approved by the board. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any further? Commissioner Fiani. I would uh, just like to add that it wasn't actually a reduction to the court's budget. The courts are receiving more money this year than they did last year. It was a uh, adjustment to the uh, request of the court. So in fact, actually the courts are receiving more money than they've ever received historically in the proposed 2024 budget. Do you want some language to affect that? Oh no, the budget looks fantastic to me. I'm ready to vote. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Floor still open for other, any further comment, analysis, or questions, objection. That part of the commission uh, procedure then is closed. Move to a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. And Commissioner Smith. Yes motion carries. Thank you. We're on to 12B on your agenda. It is entitled 2023-12-195. It's a resolution approving appointments to the Livingston County Community Mental Health Authority Board. It's brought to us by the Board of Commissioners. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support, Councilman. Thank you. Questions, comment, or otherwise discussion of the resolution by commissioners. Hearing seeing none, that's closed. This goes to a voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Nine to zero passes unanimously. We're at 12C. 2023-12-196 is its number. It's a resolution. Approving appointments to the Livingston Leadership Council on aging. Can I get a motion? So moved, Eaton. Second sample. Thank you. Any questions, concerns, statements? Commissioner Sample. Yeah, in personnel, we uh, passed this resolution and it had an additional name in the new members of a Rebecca Leach. That name's not on this agenda. Uh, that is because uh, she has resigned from that opportunity. So I just wanted that in there if anybody is wondering why that name's not on the uh, list of new members. Madam Clerk, could you insert that quick asterisk in the minutes uh -huh. so it's clear? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any further comment or question? Seeing none, that portion is closed. We move to a voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 It's nine to zero. It's unanimous. We're at 12D. It's number 2023-12-197. It's a resolution approving an appointment to the Livingston County Airport Zoning Board of Appeals. Move it. Support. support <clears throat> Motion by Doma, support by Helsman. Questions, comment, advice by any commissioner? Seeing none, that portion is closed. Voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nine to zero passes unanimously. We're on to 12E. It's, a, it's numbered 2023-12-198. It's a resolution to approve the 2024 Memorandum of Agreement with MSU Extension 
as determined by the 2024 MSUE budget. Can I get a motion? So I'll move gross. Support Deaton. Thank you. Any commissioner question, comment, or analysis? I have a question. Commissioner Nakagiri. Uh, this amount, um, to, that's the uh, 228743 that dollars. that's already in the budget. Thank you. Any further question or comment? Seeing none, move to a, uh, that portion is closed. We move to a voice vote. All those in favor kindly say aye. 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 Nine to zero, the ayes have it. We're on to 12F. It's number 2023-12-199. It's a resolution authorizing 2024 nonprofit contracts. Can I get a motion? So move gross. Support Smith. Any questions, comment, analysis by commissioners? Seeing none, voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nine to zero, unanimous on 12F. We're on to 12G. It's numbered 2023-12-200. It's a resolution to accept funding from the CDC Public Health Infrastructure Grant Program through the Michigan Department of Health and Human Resources. May I get a motion? Move it. Second. Sample. Moved by Doma, second by Sample. Any comment, question, analysis? Mr. Chair, proceed. Just briefly. Yes. I apologize. It's to work. I um, did have a communication from my office regarding a change in the title. We got it in the resolution and is not in the agenda. I just want the record to reflect that it is health and human services, not resources. I see on the res on our agenda, the last word is resources. It should be services. Correct. And then on the resolution itself. The resolution I think has been amended. Resolution has been amended. Any further commissioner? Thank you. Thank you. Any further commissioner analysis question or comment? That portion is closed. We move to a roll call vote. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross? Yes. And Commissioner Helzerman? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We're on to 12H. It's uh, numbered 2023 12 201. It's a resolution authorizing the 2024 state grant agreement, grant administrator, county representative, and surveyor contracts for the remonumentation and state plain coordinate determination of the public land survey corners in Livingston County, brought to us by Registered Deeds, Brandon Denby. So uh, move the resolution, Sam Park, Gross. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions, analysis, comment? Commissioner Nakagiri. Yeah, I um, wanted to point out the, um, the, the fee to do grant administration of $7,500. I think it's um, not, it's an inappropriate expenditure of funds. The grant administration is filling out a couple of forms and um, doing a couple of reports. And for that, I, um, I think the $7,500 fee is, is too high. In fact, I would, um, I'm going to make a motion to strike the fee from the resolution. So in the, um, it's in the uh, whereas, both in the whereas and the uh, uh, be it further be it or be it resolved. I'm hearing an amendment to both the whereas clause and the be it further resolved clause on page 32, first one at the top, to strike the $7,500 figure by Commissioner Nakagiri. Is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second? Is 
There's been no second to the motion to amend. The chair rules that the motion has now died and failed as an amendment. Any other comments, questions, or discussion about the main resolution 8, 12H? Seeing none, that portion is closed. We move into a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. No. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. And Commissioner Domus. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Your agenda will now reflect we're at item number 13. It's entitled Accounts Payable Reports 13A reads claims dated December 11, 2023, and B reads payables dated November 18 through December 1st, 2023. Can I get a motion for both 12A, excuse me, 13A and B? So move for 13A and B. Support, Smith. Thank you. Questions, comment, analysis by any commissioner? on um, what's before us. Seeing none, I'll close that. And we'll go to a voice vote on 13 A and B. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Hearing none, it's nine to zero. It's unanimous. We're at item number 14 of our agenda. It's the second call to the public. The public gets two minutes at this point in time to tell us what they believe we should know and understand about just about any topic. Any cards? I do not have any cards for this one. Anybody in the audience in the room that would have liked to put in a card, but just didn't? A gentleman in the room? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Come on up. Have a seat. When you're comfortable and ready to proceed, give us your name. Make sure if it's a difficult spelling that our clerk understands and then where you live. Yes, sir. Uh, Stephen Schumacher, uh, Stephen, the old fashioned way with the PH and Schumacher, S C H U M A C H E R. And I'm in Fenton, uh, Michigan. And uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Chief Craig, who's running for Senate. Um, working on the petition drive. I saw a lot of you at the uh, Livingston County Christmas party. We know the Livingston County is gonna be a big part of the primary and the general election. And, um, you know, I wanted to be here. We're getting signatures today too, if anyone's interested in signing, I brought the petitions. But uh, otherwise just wanted to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and thank you for having me. It was very interesting. And uh, I yield my time to whoever needs it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else in the room? Thank you. Now we'll go to Zoom. If there's anybody on Zoom, use the raise your hand function or otherwise indicate or signal to us that you'd like to participate in the call to the public. I do not have any commissioner. I agree, I see none either. So the call to the public on Zoom is closed. We move on to item number 15. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So move, Halsman. Support Deaton. All those in favor of the motion? Kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nine to zero passes unanimously at 7.15 p.m.